brother! Today, this week, we were on the front page of Pottermore, so it feels only fitting that we have to talk about Harry Potter today. And what better thing to discuss than everyone's favorite phoenix, and more importantly, who his original owner was. <laughs> As you guys can imagine in researching this video, I have just been wading through tons of Harry Potter trivia and so it's only fitting that today's video is brought to you by the free live trivia game Beat the Q. It's a super easy game to play, just download the Buzz video app, the link is in the description down below. They have two live shows a day and if you make it past the 12th round then you split a cash pot with everyone else left standing. And this Sunday it is a big cash pot of $25,000. Extra exciting about the Sunday game is that Jay and I will actually be curating one of the questions. So if you stick around to the end of the video, you might just have one of the answers to the questions this Sunday. In addition to having one of the answers to the questions on lock, you can also use promo code SCB to get an extra life and stay alive in the game longer. And speaking of staying alive, Let's talk about phoenixes. Jay, phoenixes are freaking awesome. They have healing tears, magical songs, can carry immense loads, disappear and reappear on command, and on top of that, they live for freaking ever. So yeah, when it comes to Dumbledore's pet phoenix fox, he's pretty awesome, but he's also never entirely made sense to me. He kind of sometimes just seems like a huge plot device. At the end of the Chamber of Secrets, he just shows up out of nowhere and blinds the Basilisk. Hermione reminds us a thousand times that you can't apparate in or out of Hogwarts, but you know who still can? Fox. Injured by incurable venom? No problem! Fox is there to save the day! He's just a big bag of answers that Dumbledore just seems to have. In the Goblet of Fire, we learned that Fox's feathers are the ones that reside in Harry and Voldemort's wands, and it's like, while that's a really cool fact, what difference does it really make? Well, let me rephrase that. The Twin Cores, of course, are a huge deal. They are the very climax of Book 4, and Voldemort spends the better part of Book 7 trying to figure out a way around it and hunting down the Elder Wand. That is an extremely relevant detail. On the other hand, why do they explain to us that the feathers are specifically from Fox if that never goes on to make any specific difference? Because otherwise it's just random trivia, just one more thing about Fox that doesn't totally make sense. Actually, this is a question that we have been trying to get to the bottom of here at SCB for a very long time. And for a while, we totally thought we had a really good explanation. Basically that Fox was Dumbledore's Horcrux. Personally, I still think that explanation makes 100% sense, but JK Rowling kind of shot it down, so there's that. Click the card if you want to see that entire video though. Since then though, we have thought long and hard about it, and I think we have finally come up with an explanation that will fully explain Fox's existence. The issue was trying to continuously draw some type of big connection between Fox Dumbledore and Harry somehow summoning Fox to the Chamber of Secrets with the sorting hat. Did Dumbledore know that the hat and the sword were connected? How would Fox know to bring him those things? And what does Dumbledore have to do with the sword and the hat anyway? They both belong to Gryffindor. And that's when it hit me. It's not just the sword and the hat that belong to Gryffindor, it's Fox as well. Every time I've ever tried to fathom Fox's origins, it always had to do with Dumbledore. When did he get him? How did he get him? But because Fox is essentially immortal, his history dates back way before his ownership under Dumbledore. And once you start looking, the clues are everywhere. First, a very surface level observation is simply that Fox's colors are scarlet and gold, which just so also happens to be the colors of Gryffindor House. In Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, they are given a 4x rating, and not because they are dangerous, but because so few wizards have actually been successful in domesticating them. Dumbledore and Gryffindor are both described as the most brilliant wizards of their time, so I think it would absolutely make sense that if anyone could do it, it would be either of them. Not to mention, Newt Scamander is the author of this book. 
How does he know? We know, of course, that he will know Dumbledore, but does he know multiple wizards who have successfully tamed phoenixes? Or does he just know that in a thousand years that the same phoenix has just been tamed twice? Newt also writes in his book that the phoenix's song is known to increase the courage in pure of heart and to strike fear into the hearts of the impure. Increase the courage and pure of heart? That does sound an awful lot like what Gryffindor looks for in his students. There is also a theory out there that suggests that each of the founders created a specific room in the castle. Hufflepuff, the known food charmer, would have done the Great Hall, the place where everybody comes together. Ravenclaw, the room of requirement that you must be just so clever to enter. Slytherin obviously created the Chamber of Secrets, but then what about Gryffindor? How about Fox's home, the headmaster's office, with its griffin-shaped door knockers. And, you know, home to his other two key relics, the sword and the hat. Even if you don't buy into the idea that Gryffindor used to own Fox, I don't think you can deny the fact that he created the headmaster's office. I mean, the doors literally have griffins on them. They are Griffin doors. I personally like to think that Godric Gryffindor had a sense of humor about him. Although Gryffindor owning Fox does offer a lot of like very elegant symmetry about the battle between Harry and Voldemort. First of all, each of them have a phoenix tail feather in their wands, which is a cool bit of fact, but offers so much more historical importance if they came from Gryffindor himself. But it also evens them out some. Voldemort and Harry are both kind of associated with Slytherin House. I mean Harry because Voldemort accidentally made him a horcrux, but all the same. Think about it. It would mean that each of them carries a piece of each founder with them at all times. That they simultaneously represent the power of the two wizards and the feud that ultimately destroyed their friendship. It would also help explain why a fox tail feather would ever select Tom Riddle. Because Gryffindor and Slytherin were the best of friends at one point in their life and Fox would have been around to witness it. And it also kind of helps explain why the twin cores wouldn't allow the two to destroy each other just another testament to that ancient friendship. And after Voldemort marks Harry as his equal, it only makes sense that the other tail feather would choose Harry. Not to mention, I love the idea that not only did Slytherin leave behind a beast in the form of a basilisk that could live for centuries, but so did Gryffindor as well with a phoenix. So when Harry finally confronts Tom Riddle in the Chamber of Secrets, we're basically seeing two generations of the same feud. They're animals that they left behind in the castle and Harry versus Tom Riddle. And on top of that, both of these animals basically represent the renewal of life. Phoenixes, of course, being reborn from their own ashes, but snakes as well very symbolically represent the same idea in the way that they shed their skin and essentially are reborn. The obvious parallels between Fox and the Basilisk is basically proof enough for me. I mean, they are essentially two sides of the same coin. Both live nearly forever, both have a champion in the chamber, and if Slytherins is represented by the Basilisks, well, then it's just basic math. Cross, multiply, and divide, and oh yeah, Fox of Gryffindor, it makes sense. And I know what you're saying, of course, but Ben, if Gryffindor owned Fox, why is the house mascot a lion and not just a phoenix? And while maybe that's a good point, I would also ask you the question, why is it a lion and not a griffin? I mean, he got so close, right? A griffin is basically just a lion with wings. He got the lion, it's almost like he was begging you to ask, where are the wings? Well, I personally think we may have just found them. Guys, for my question of the day, what do you think? Do you think that Fox could have originally belonged to Gryffindor? Be sure to leave all of your thoughts in the towel section down below. Also guys, once again, have to thank today's sponsor, the Top Buzz app, where you can play the free live trivia game, Beat the Q. We have a link to you can play it down in the description below. And as promised, here is the hint for Sunday's trivia game. Did you know that John Ratzenberger has voiced a character in every single Pixar movie? Also be sure to use promo code SCB to get an extra life to stay in the game longer. I think everyone here at SCB is just going to pool our knowledge together and go at it as a team. That's how I would definitely recommend doing it because it's a $25,000 cash pot. Guys, as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some more Harry Potter action from us, you can click right here to watch the video about Dumbledore's Horcrux or right here to see Voldemort's failed Horcrux. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.